the opposition leader in Queensland. She joins us now from Brisbane. Deb, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Paul. Great to be on your show. So let's talk about your mate and mine, Jackie Trad. Um, so you can see the game that she's starting to play here, which is if this goes to the Crime and Corruption Commission, I'll step aside. But I'm pretty sure that she knows that this either will not meet the threshold for that level of an investigation or essentially she's going to, to try to, well, play, play a certain game knowing how long it would be for that investigation to start. She's said her sorries, but only after the courier mail and, and, and yourself and, and plenty of others have been on her for a while. What do you think about this game of, oh, I'll step aside if the Triple C wants me to? Well, look, I don't think Queenslanders believe it. Jackie Trad needs to go. And it goes right back to Anastasia Palaszczuk, who's meant to be the Premier. She should have actually <coughs> made this decision a couple of weeks ago. And let's remember what Jackie Trad actually said today. She said that she called the Premier and said that she would step aside if the Triple C decided to investigate. So there's a couple of things. First of all, Anastasia Palaszczuk needs to show some backbone. She's the Premier of this state, not Jackie Trad, so she should have made that decision a couple of weeks ago. And more than that, she actually should have sacked Jackie Trad. That's what overwhelmingly the people of Queensland have been saying. And it's not just the LNP poll, it's actually that Channel 9 poll that well, you were referring to earlier. What about that? 74% of people, some 20,000 that have voted in it, rather obvious which way they want it to go, yeah. which is that, uh, that she goes out. And, and what people don't understand, including the spinmeisters that are sort of sent out around the Brisbane media to try to pull this story back, is it's just... Let's, let's just go back to the basic and bare essentials. The reasons you have to declare what you own is so people can work out whether you are advantaged or otherwise by a decision that you make. Now, yes, the rising tide might uh, lift all boats, but that's why we have to know whether you own a boat that is going to be uh, lifted up by a decision that's made. That's why there's... So it, it, there's not this argument about, oh, well, I filled out the paperwork eventually, oh, I was a little bit... No, it's the very principle that when you fail to do that, you are being contemptuous of that process. Well, there's that, but let's also remember, this is the Treasurer of Queensland who under her control at the time when she purchased or her husband purchased a $700,000 house that they negotiated via text message, apparently, <laughs> um, she was in control of Brisbane's or Queensland's largest infrastructure project, a $7 billion cross river rail. Now, it has come out, it's obvious that the house is going to increase in value, which is why, weeks ago, I was saying when this scandal first hit and this integrity crisis first hit the Labor government up here, is I was saying, did the Deputy Premier use confidential and government information for her own personal gain? Now, if, if this... If this um, person didn't think that that was an issue, why didn't she come out, get it referred to the Triple C straight away? But instead, Jackie Trad and Anastasia Palaszczuk had to be dragged kicking and screaming to have this matter um, referred. And we also need to remember, Jackie Trad picked up the phone on a Sunday and called the chair of the Crime and Corruption Commission here in Queensland. Now, that is unheard of and quite unbelievable, and no wonder over 70 and over 80 per cent of people in one poll is saying Jackie Trad, the Treasurer of Queensland, needs to go mm -hmm. and Anastasia Palaszczuk needs to actually sack her. It's, it's really obvious and the people of Queensland have spoken that, you know, the sick and tired of these Labor MPs who were using uh, their positions for their own personal gain. Tomorrow is yet another promise from these idiots to try to disrupt a Brisbane in the name of uh, you know, climate change and fighting it, etc., etc. Um, what does it say about our system that you get a $350 fine for disrupting uh, the capital city of Queensland, yet if you streaked at Suncorp Stadium on the weekend, you'd get a fine that would be thousands of dollars? Yeah, and look, frightening for tomorrow. Apparently, there's going to be around 1,000 people. Uh, they're planning uh, all-day protests. Now, I've always said everyone's got a right to protest. No problem with that. Do it in your own time, in a park somewhere where you're not disrupting people getting to work. Our emergency services in Queensland have had to tell people to avoid Brisbane City. This is unbelievable and these morons really need to either stay in bed for the day or they should be doing what other Queenslanders are going to try to do tomorrow which is go to work and earn a living. 
Uh, it, like I say, everyone's got a right to protest, but this is taking it just one step too far. And I think it's very disturbing when mums and dads aren't even going to be able to drop their kids off at daycare or, and get to work so they can earn a living. And yet we've got these people um, that are getting a slap on the wrist, ultimately. $350, it's not enough, and that's exactly why we need to change the laws. Uh, a lot of federal government action that was in town today, and that, of course, uh, affects projects like mining. Interestingly, today, Matt Canavan has said that he wants a process where, essentially, one year. That's what it takes for application to uh, all things being ticked off when it comes to a... Uh, uh, a mine. We know that, of course, the Adani review process rolls on as we speak. What do you think of, uh, of how long it takes to get a mine approved in this country? Well, it's completely unacceptable here in Queensland. We've just got the example of the Adani Carmichael mine. Nearly 10 years, and no wonder the Federal Minister has had to step in and say, we need an inquiry. And obviously, um, that should be based in Queensland because there's no greater example of a failure of the system when it comes to approving mines um, than what the Palaszczuk government has done to that Galilee Basin mine. And, and that's exactly why, Paul, we've got to open up um, the process to... We need to make sure the environmental and financial uh, regulations are ticked off, the process is done properly and correctly. But we shouldn't be bringing politics into it like Palaszczuk did with the black throat of Finch and every other obstacle that they threw in the way. We need to ensure that we actually get the mining approvals streamlined, which is exactly what a future LNP government will do if we're so fortunate to get in. But I'm looking forward to that inquiry. Um, that is going to be headed up by Matt Canavan, and I think it's a sensible way forward because we need to give some certainty back into the resources industry because we need them to invest in, in Queensland. We're, we're a resources state and it's about time we started acting like one. Well, October can't come fast enough in 2020. We'll wait and see between now and then. Plenty more to talk about with you, Deb. All the best. Thank you to you and your team. No worries. Great talking to you. Good on you, mate. Deb Frecklington, leader of the LNP and opposition leader in Queensland.